sort of used this uh, passage in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 as our sort of Christmas theme this year. <clears throat> and um, it reads, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Let's take a moment. This is our heads in prayer. <coughs> Father, as we open your word now, we just read this wonderful prophetic passage that a child will be born. This child will change the course of history, the course of eternity. We thank you that we know a child was our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we hear this message this morning, I pray that you would give us grace to be able to hear with spiritual ears, open our hearts and minds to rehearse once again the glorious facts of the gospel, the glorious facts of who this child would be and what he would accomplish. And Lord, that you would work in our hearts so that we might live, as Walter said, in a way that our passion is on fire for you. We read that the child would accomplish all these things with zeal. Might that be the story of our lives, Lord, that we desire to live with zeal for you. And Lord, help us to, to hear now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. <coughs> If you had to look at the pattern of your life over this last year, the last six months, the last month, the last week, yesterday, would you describe it as peaceful? We are living in a world at war, and as I've said previously, the only peace that there seems to be in, in this world today is when the warring parties stop to reload and then go at it again. <clears throat> In James chapter 4 verse 1 we read there, What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source of pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask for the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulteresses, do you not know that a friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of this world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to you to no purpose? He jealously desires the spirit which he has made to dwell in us, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your heart, your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Now, James says, where do the wars come from? Look no further, he says, than yourself. <clears throat> if you're involved in any conflict of any sort, he says, don't look at the other person. He said, look at yourself. Look at your own heart. 
That's where war comes from. It's within our hearts to fight. Now this was not always so. For in the beginning, God created a perfect universe of things visible and invisible. <clears throat> Creatures both great and small, celestial beings, those in the, in the spiritual realm, and terrestrial beings, those that are earthbound. All these created beings were rigidly at peace with God, at peace with nature, at peace with the cosmos, at peace with one another. And everything that God created, He saw and He said it was very good. All was at peace until that peace was shattered in the celestial realm by Lucifer, star of the morning, son of the dawn, who in Isaiah we read in chapter 14, verse 13, said in his heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the Lord. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Sounds like straight out of James. Look no further than yourself when the war is on. Satan said, I want to be God. I want to rule this universe. Uh, I want my way, my rights, my needs met. I want to be the first. I want to, uh, everyone to bow down to me. In fact, I want God to worship me and grant me my wants. I want to be God. Lucifer go up to the third of the angelic realm, the angels, to join him in his rebellion against God. And he was cast out of heaven. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fly out of heaven like lightning. Um, and then, as he flew out of heaven, he set his sights on this terrestrial ball on which we live. <clears throat> then he led man, who was in perfect peace and fellowship with God, into an act of rebellion against God. Were it not, though, for the plan of God from before the foundation of this world to demonstrate who He really is, His characteristics of grace, mercy, love, atonement, propitiation, reconciliation, redemption, restoration, and renewal in His Son, the Prince of Peace, we would probably not be here today. For he could have simply destroyed the world with one spoken word and started again. Now this shattered peace still exists today and affects every single one of us sitting here today. <clears throat> At present, the kingdoms of this world belong to the prince of the power of the earth. The one that is working in the sons of disobedience through the demonic realm. The worldly philosophies, the cultures, the subcultures, the music, the arts, IT, social media, politics, drugs, and every other addiction. You name it. All that is anti-God. With a goal of keeping each and every human being, Christian and non-Christian, from worshipping the real prince, the prince of peace. <clears throat> Satan has an insatiable desire for worship and will do everything in his power through these spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realm to prevent you and me from truly worshipping Jesus Christ and God. But let's look at this amazing prophecy given in Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 that a child would be born into where? Into this war zone of a world. A child coming down from the Father of Lights, from the celestial realm into the terrestrial realm, and being born in a manger in Bethlehem as prophesied in the book of Michael, and announced by the angel Gabriel to Mary and Joseph, by an angel meeting with the shepherds, and with a multitude of the heavenly hosts, saying, <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom He's pleased. What an amazing prophecy. In a world that is torn apart by hatred and violence, peace with whom he is well pleased. For 
this child was no ordinary child, for the child was none other than God himself, now appearing in flesh. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, as opposed to the Prince of the Power of the Air, Satan, who is veiled in the glorious gospel to a lost and dying, warring world. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, we read, <clears throat> Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might, may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. But into this world the Prince of Peace came as a child, offering peace to all men, on the basis of the fact that he would pay the price of the sin of man, and that through his death, burial, and resurrection from the dead, man could once again be reconciled to God and know peace, even in the midst of chaos. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, we read these words. Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles, that's us, in the flesh, we were called the uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. <clears throat> but now, in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly far off, had been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace. You see, this child is the Prince of Peace. He is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by it having put to death the enmity. And he came, Christ came, and he preached peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near. In other words, to the Gentiles who were excluded from God, and to the Jews who were supposed to be the closest to God. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens of the, with the saints, and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the very cornerstone, <clears throat> whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. My friends, let me ask you, is this true of your life? Have you personally come to know the Prince of Peace? To worship Him? This child that was born in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago? Have you come to Him like the shepherds who was announced to that a Savior would be born for you this day? And the heavenly host of angels declared that those who come to this one those with whom he has favor, peace will be upon them. Have you come by confessing your sin? Have you come by admitting that you need a Savior? <clears throat> Have you come confessing that he alone is the one, the Prince of Peace, who has made peace and can make peace between you and God the Father? Have you bowed the knee to Jesus Christ by surrendering your life to him? by being willing to serve Him as His humble servants, to serve Him, your Lord and your Savior? Are you willing to obey Him, to live by His way, His truth and His life? If you have never done that, then you can come now and call on Him 
even now, to save your soul. And he will, for the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friends, the Bible warns that today is the day of salvation. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. Today is the day to come to the Prince of Peace. Do not hide in your heart, but come to Him and allow Him to make peace with you and God, for there is no one else that can do that. Now the next thing for those that are saved, for those that have accepted Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, into their lives, we know that the Bible prophesies that He will return to earth Firstly, to gather the church to himself in the celestial realm to be with him for all time. But then he will return to this earth in flaming vengeance to establish a literal reign of forced peace for a thousand years. For he will rule from the throne of David with a rod of iron and sin will be dealt with very swiftly. The prince of the power of the air, Satan, will be cast into a bottomless pit during this thousand years. But at the end of that thousand years, he will be let out again, and he will stir up the nations against the prince of peace, be captured, cast into the lake of fire, to be tormented day and night for all eternity. The child born to us as the prince of peace, now the King of kings and the Lord of lords will then sit on a great white throne and judge all those who refuse to accept him and his peace. He will judge them to a lake of fire for all eternity. And then he will establish a new heavens and a new earth for all those who have bowed their knee and worshipped him, giving them eternal peace with God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me close now and just bring it down to where we live. <laughs> See Isaiah 26 verse 3, The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in God the Lord we have an everlasting rock. Do you have peace in your life? Firstly, with God. Or are you still at war with God? The Bible says we are born at enmity, at war with God. And unless we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, for He paid the price for us at Calvary, there is no other way to have peace with God. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but through me. There simply is no other way than to come and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Are you able to say without a shadow of doubt, He has saved my soul, and I belong to Him? For those who are saved, let me ask you, are you still at peace with God? Because sin separates us from God. Sin separates us from partnership, fellowship with God. And it alienates us from enjoying His peace in our lives. Well, let me ask you, are you in partnership with God in what He's trying to do today in this world? He's trying to save a lost and a dying world. And to be saved and not simply, otherwise He would save us and take us to heaven. But as a church, He's given us a task, a task of joint partnership with Him to be in this world and to be looking out to this world, to reach out to the gospel, to share the word of God in word and in deed, the way that we conduct ourselves. But sin will stop you doing that. Sin will silence the gospel. Does your life reflect His peace? Does your home reflect His peace? We're at this time of Christmas, and we all know that this is, can be a crazy time of year, especially when you get together with relatives that are not saved and are unsaved. 
and uh, they come and they come and visit, and uh, they don't know what to do with it <coughs> when it comes to Sunday morning. Uh, do we go to church? Do we invite them to church? Uh, do we stay at home and pretend that uh, church doesn't exist for that day? Uh, what do we do with them? Well, the Prince of Peace would have you live for Him and do what you normally do. Live for Jesus. A wonderful time to share the gospel, to conduct yourself as a Christian, to demonstrate the love of Christ to them. Does your marriage reflect his peace? I was explaining to somebody the other day that in, <clears throat> in this country, we live for holidays, we live for the weekends. And uh, when it comes to holidays, it's the most amazing things. A husband and wife can be at war, and uh, the children can be at war. But come the holidays, suddenly everybody gets home. We pack the van and off we go down <coughs> to the holiday place and everybody's having a fantastic time and if you had to ask them then no everything's fine life's great everything's just going hunky dory until you get home again <coughs> the minute the bags are packed everything's done washed we pick up where we left off and we go to war until the next holiday it's an amazing thing south africans are quite adept at doing that this ought not to be. We ought to have peace all the time. And peace is in Jesus Christ. Peace is being in a right relationship with Him. Let me ask you, does your workplace testimony reflect His peace in your heart? Is He the Prince of Peace ruling in your heart through your obedience to His Word and the power of the indwelling Spirit? You see, in James, He gives the... He gives the the antidote to going to war. The antidote is what? He said he jealously desires the spirit in you. What does that mean? He desires that the Holy Spirit controls your life. The fruit of the spirit is love, not war, not hatred, peace, not fighting, not war, joy, Patience, kindness. So you can tell at any moment, am I under the control of the Spirit of God? Does He have first place in my life? Is He really leading me? Or have I pushed Him aside and taken over? Because I want what I want. God jealously desires that the Spirit indwell you will control your life today, tomorrow, 24-7, until it comes again. How do we get that right? How do we allow the Spirit of God to control our lives? Well, we read the Scriptures, and when we read a passage like Galatians, <coughs> that uh, we should be led by the Spirit, and then we read that passage that says, well, if you have enmity and fighting and at war and all that, that means that you're not under control of the Spirit. And James says, when you get like that, what do we need to do? We need to humble ourselves, confess our sin, and come back under the control of the Spirit and tell God, I, I don't want to be acting like this. Forgive me. Lord, I need your peace. I want to be a peaceful person. And we need to humble ourselves and come back under the control of the Spirit of God almost on a daily basis. So as we're in this midst of this holiday period, any wars that are going on in your life, do what the Word of God has said you ought to do. Humble yourself. Humble yourself before God and say, Lord, I need you. I need your help. You are the Prince of Peace. The Holy Spirit is the power of God to take control of my life. And give me that peace. I can't do it in my own strength. It's to say, Lord, I need you. As we close in prayer now, take a moment to reflect on your life. If there's no peace, you need to confess your sin. And ask God to restore that peace. He will. 
says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Not so that you can go and sin again, but that you can come back into fellowship, partnership with him, and continue doing the work that he's called you to do, to be a peacemaker, to share the gospel, and to reach out to your family, your friends, your work colleagues. Let us take a moment and let's just bow our heads and let us pray.